Welcome to first webinar on Groovy and Grails course from jpassion.com. So today's topic is Groovy Basics. We are going to cover three uh, Groovy uh, topics, Groovy Basics. Today we are going to focus mostly on syntax. Next week is going to be pretty important uh, topic. Uh, we are going to cover closure. And uh, third week we are going to cover meta programming. Uh, and the rest of the course we are going to dedicate to Grails. Okay, all right. So let's move on to the presentation. For those of you who have exposure to javapassion.com or jpassion.com, the way things work is that we are going to use slides for uh, uh, the learning concepts and then we have a hands-on lab. And uh, so as part of the demo, uh, we are going to do hands-on lab on, uh, and we'll take each exercises. Okay, so let's move on to Groovy Basics. So these are the set of topics that we are going to cover. First, we are going to learn what is and why Groovy. And then most of the presentation will be dedicated to learning Groovy syntax. Uh, we'll see the differences from Java. And then we'll try to refactor a simple Java code to Groovy code. And uh, then we will see how uh, you can actually uh, uh, use Java code in your Groovy application. And finally, we will take a look at Groovy ecosystem. So what is and why Groovy? Groovy is dynamic and object-oriented scripting language for Java virtual machine. It is designed to be well integrated with Java. So in fact, it is designed with Java in mind from the beginning. It is for Java developers. And that's the difference from other scripting languages. So it's very easy to learn for Java developers. And it borrowed a lot of language features from other languages, such as uh, Ruby, Python, and Smalltalk. So the reason you want to use Groovy as a Java, especially as a Java developer over other scripting languages is because Groovy is designed with the Java developers in mind. So you can take advantage of all the Java uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, in your Groovy applications. And uh, so Groovy provides an effortless transition from Java, meaning, you know, it's, it's learning, learning Groovy and using Groovy is very, very easy for Java developers, as, as you're going to see in a few minutes. So, for example, Groovy code, when compiled, uh, is going to generate the Java bytecode. It's the same class file. And uh, existing Java code work in Groovy environment as it is. All you have to do is, in fact, change the name of the file to Groovy. So instead of main.java, you're going to change the name to Groovy, uh, main.groovy, then that's a Groovy program. So you don't have to change any of your Java code, uh, and you can use it as it is basis in your Groovy application. So that allows you to incrementally change your existing Java code to Groovy. You don't have to change everything in one single shot. You're basically changing uh, small pieces. So as I said before, Groovy is Java. In fact, it's a better Java, people say, because it provides synthetic sugar. Uh, so it's a lot easier to learn uh, than uh, the original Java. So it's easy and fun to code, just like a Ruby language. And uh, new language features such as dynamic typing and closure and metaprogramming. So these are the, the uh, cornerstone new language features uh, that are available on other languages, but it was not they are not available for Java at this point, even though a future version of Java is trying to address these issues. So it provides easier development environment. Uh, it, 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 it lets you actually do some scripting. Uh, and uh, it compiles, by the way, it combines compilation and execution in a single step. So if you have, for example, xyz.groovy file, all you have to do is groovy and xyz.groovy, and then it will compile and execute in a single step. Instead of compiling in one step, and then you have to run it uh, in the second step in the original uh, uh, Java. And it provides a shell interpreter, and, uh, you know, it lets you actually kind of uh, exercise your Groovy uh, uh, programs in a shell environment. All right, so let's do our first lab. So exercise one, exercise, exercise zero is installation of Groovy, and exercise one we are going to uh, see how 
uh, Groovy is uh, well integrated with Java. So let's go to the exercise zero. So basically, the only thing you need to uh, run Groovy is JDK, and then you're going to download and uh, unzip Groovy. So here, you're going to go to the Groovy site and uh, download a binary file. And uh, all you have to do is just unzip it, and then it's going to uh, create Groovy and version number and uh, lots of job files. And then it does also create a bin directory in which you are going to find the Groovy command. Okay, and of course you wanna actually have this bin directory of Groovy in your path so that you can run this Groovy. And uh, then you should be able to display. So let's actually try those things. So here I have Java tools and Groovy. And uh, here, I want to go to bin directory. And uh, if you take a look at the what uh, commands are available, uh, you can see there is a Groovy. And uh, we are going to actually also use uh, Groovy console and Groovy shell. Okay. All right. So here, you can actually run the Groovy shell. So let's try to run the Groovy shell. Groovy. Groovy shell. So this is the shell I was talking about. So it basically interpret whatever you typed in and uh, then you should be able to see the result. So four plus five. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to have uh, maybe name and sanction. And uh, it just evaluate this statement and returns the result right away. Something like that. Okay. And uh, you can also say print ln name, and you can see the result right here. Okay. So here uh, it evaluates, and uh, the uh, then return value of that evaluation, I mean the end result of that evaluation will be displayed. So that's the result. In this case, the end result of running print ln is null. Okay. So this is actually from the print ln statement itself, but the result. Uh, the end result of running print ln is null. There is no return value. So that's the reason it is displaying null. Right? So let's just to quit this one. Uh, the, uh, you, can, you can obviously use IDE such as Eclipse and NetBeans. Uh, and uh, for uh, Eclipse, you can just install the plugin. And same thing for NetBeans. For Eclipse, you go to Eclipse Marketplace. And uh, then you're going to just type Groovy or Grails, and then you're going to install on whatever version of Eclipse you want to use. You're going to mostly use uh, Groovy console in this hands-on lab. So you're not going to actually use uh, IDE. All right, moving forward, exercise one. All right, so here, the key point I'd like to actually uh, learn from this exercise is that uh, Groovy is a better Java or Java. Okay. So what you're going to do is we are going to create a Java program, main the Java, and then we're going to run it. Okay. So let's try to, uh, I'm going to actually go to this directory, which I already have. And uh, then I'm going to create main Java. And it looks like I might have a main Java already. Okay, here we go. So main Java, this is Java code. Okay. So I'm going to just compile and run. This is a two-step process for Java. So I have to compile in Java. And I have a class file. And then I should be able to run like this. It's hello world. Okay. Now, all you have to do to make it a Groovy program is to change the name. So this is what I meant as that, you know, Java, the Groovy is Java. So any Java program can be Groovy code, just, just changing the name. So here, I'm going to change the name. So uh, I already have it, but I'm going to just change it again. So uh, I'm going to just copy main Java and main Groovy. Okay. I'm going to just overwrite. So you can see, in fact, they are the same file. Uh, you know, they're the same size. Now all you have to do is just run Groovy command. Okay. 
and uh, then it uh, display the result. So this exercise actually shows you that Java is groovy, okay? And uh, groovy is Java. All right, so let's move on to the next. So why you want to use Groovy? Well, in that case, you know, in 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 the sense in that sense, Scala uh, for writing your application instead of original Java, and then we'll see the state of Java to actually justify, you know, why you want to use a Groovy or Scala. Java as a programming language, you know, we're going to actually look at the Java uh, one from the perspective as a programming language and the other as a JVM. Java as a programming language has been a huge success, but it has been showing its age. Uh, you can, you know, you can see the major uh, language. Uh, the uh, enhancement was done in uh, 2004 when JDK 5 was introduced. Now JDK 8 is being actually uh, worked on. Uh, that J it, so new language features will be actually kind of added in uh, JDK uh, 8 and 9. But for now, you know J JDK doesn't really have uh, modern uh, programming language features such as a closure, meta programming, domain specific language, or functional programming operator overloading and regular expressions. So these are the key features that are at this point missing in Java programming language. And writing Java program is somewhat verbose and complex compared to, for example, Ruby. And um, so those are the issues of Java as a programming language. Now, the other side of the other uh, coin is a platform. JVM has been extremely popular platform and still remains to be a very, very popular runtime platform because it provides a secure and highly performing and mature runtime platform. And there are a lot of uh, Java libraries over JVM. So what you want to do is, you know, you want to use the uh, JVM as a runtime platform and at the same time take advantage of all the existing Java libraries, but you want to actually use modern programming language features such as your closure and meta programming and things like that, which I mentioned in previous slide. So basically that's what Groovy is all about in the sense Scala is all about. They provide better programming, lang programming language, but they are running over JVM. Okay, so it runs over JVM, it's, it lets you do more productive programming and it's a lot more fun and less verbose syntax than original Java. And again, it does provide those modern language features such as a closure, meta programming, uh, DSL, domain specific language, and things like that. And again, it provides a seamless interoperability with Java, as you have seen a few minutes ago. So the choices you can choose as a modern programming language that you want to run over JVM uh, includes Groovy, Scala, JRuby, and Clojure. And here we are going to mostly focus on Groovy. All right, Groovy tools. Uh, Groovy Shell, which I showed you a few minutes ago, provides interactive command line application. Uh, you can type in a uh, Groovy statement and then you get the result. And uh, Groovy console is the GUI, GUI version of Groovy Shell. And we're going to actually mostly use Groovy console for running Groovy application in this particular hands on lab. And you can actually save, uh, create, and load and run the Groovy code. All right, so let's move on to Groovy syntax. So you define variables using diff, uh, the uh, def uh, keyword. So you can think of def as a replacement for type in variable definitions. In Java, you have to provide a type, right? Now, as I said before, I'm not sure I said it or not, one of the key features of Groovy is a dynamic typing, meaning you don't want to actually specify type. Uh, on your code. So that's the time that you want to use def. So def is used to indicate that you don't care about the type. Okay. So you can think of def as an alias of object. So object is a root type. Uh, so that applies to everything, right? So you can think of def as object. So here I am going to create a variable called the dynamic. So basically what I'm saying is that, you know, I want to actually make this variable to be dynamic type. So based on what is being assigned, the type is going to be changed here. The type of dynamic here is going to be integer here. Uh, I can type it and then I can assign a different type. So here I'm assigning string type and that's perfectly fine because, uh, you know, I define this type as dynamic type, right? 
On the other hand, in Java, if you specify a type like int in this case, and then if you try to assign a string type like this, that will uh, cause class cast exception. Okay. All right. So we are going to try to run this code one by one. All right. So this is the uh, Groovy console. As I said, this is a GUI version of, uh, you can think of it as a GUI version of uh, Groovy shell. Right, so all you have to do is just copy this code. And let me just increase uh, the font size. Okay. And then you can execute it. Okay. So here uh, it displays one, and here it displays a string type. And here, uh, this is the other uh, way that you are writing Java code. And here I assign two. Now, if I try to change the type of it here, then it will have uh, the uh, the cast exception, Groovy cast exception. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Scope of variables. So you can actually have you can you can actually define variable without using the def. Okay. Uh, but there is actually a subtle difference. Uh, the uh, the uh, when you define a variable without def, uh, that puts the variable in the bindings of current script and Groovy uh, and Groovy treats it like a globally scope variable. So when you're running this code in a scripting environment like what we are doing here, it will actually assign this variable into the uh, global scope. In fact, it's actually scripting uh, the uh, script, you know, script. You can think of it as actually uh, the, uh, the scripting scope. And uh, so here, uh, you can certainly access it and you can actually check whether this particular variable is actually binded to that uh, global scope. Okay, so in this case, this will display true. Okay. However, if you're using diff, diff a keyword, uh, it will actually uh, assign this, uh, it will actually define this variable in a local scope. Okay, so obviously you can access it here, but if you try to check it, whether that is in the global scope or not, then you will actually have an error. Okay, so this is the way that you can check whether this particular variable is in the global binding. Okay, and here, uh, you know, the variable that you define with a def is not in the global, uh, the, uh, the scope or global binding. So it will actually uh, cause a missing property exception because there is no Y in the global scope. Okay. So let's try this. And run it. And as you can see, uh, you know, here you are going to, uh, uh, you know, the, this is this, this, this statement will uh, cause an exception. All right. Yeah, we can actually try this one and uh, the, uh, uh, we can actually try this one in, in the shell environment as well. So let's try this. And uh, I'm going to, so groovy. By the way, everything I'm demonstrating right now has been actually uh, documented in the hands-on lab. So you can try those things looking at the documentation later on. Okay, so this is the Groovy shell. So here I'm going to try to define a variable with and without uh, def. So here uh, I say name uh, saying like this. And uh, then I will uh, define def name as yeah, about John, John's. Okay. Now, if I try to display uh, the uh, printer and uh, he's actually defining here instead of John's. The reason is because this is, as I said before, uh, is created in global scope. Uh, so when you're running this uh, Groovy shell, the global scope is actually basically scripting scope. So it is there. However, when you define this def uh, name, uh, this is actually defined the local scope. This is evaluated and then it's gone. So that's the reason it's not actually displaying John's here. 
However, if you are running this code in the global uh, the in the console, then you are going to actually see uh, Johns because it doesn't go away. Okay, so uh, that's the way things. Work. So 